morning. It's a beautiful day here. It's actually Thanksgiving. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. We're gonna do a little wahoo fishing this morning and hopefully catch a wahoo. Let's see what happens. We're gonna fish a three rod spread. Put some new lures together last night. And we're gonna see what happens. We do have the one electric over there and all the rest will be hand cranked. But put some of these bad boys together and hopefully get a bite. And these wahoos, they come in packs sometimes. If you hook one, you can hook multiples. They could range anywhere from 10 or 15 pounds on the small side up to 40, 50 pounds. It'd be a nice one for us here. We'll see what happens when we get these set and keep our fingers crossed. And this little safety cord here is from Tigris Marine, outriggers and gear. And that reel is like 5,000 bucks, so you don't want to lose it. And those safety lines, they're good on all big conventional reels, honestly. I mean, why would you risk losing a rod that costs five, six, seven hundred bucks or more? You can just clip it in there super quick and easy. So always good to have those, at least on your big rods. This is electric or wire line, a little different type of line on it. We rigged up this big lure last night. A little bigger than the rest of them. Well, I figured we might as, might as well stick one big boy out there. Let's see what happens. That's what I was working on the kitchen table last night. Come on, Wahoo. We can throw some Wahoo on the table with our Thanksgiving turkey. I know I got a turkey from the Cajun Turkey Company. So we've been Wahoo trolling now about 20 minutes or so. No bites yet but the water's got really blue up here. We're headed to the north and a light current. I got a report about 10 or 15 miles north of here. There's better current going to the north. We got a southwest current down here, but the water got pretty and sun's coming up, a beautiful sunrise. And the trick to catch the Wahoo is to burn a lot of gas. You just gotta drive around a lot and cover some ground. So we're still driving, still burning gas and fingers crossed we get a bite on the shallow sport this morning. Whoa, Fish. We now you could pick this rod up and hold it and it would be really uncomfortable all right so that wahoo we are going along we've been fishing an hour he piled on it. he was screaming line he actually came off and he i don't know if he came back or a second one came back and hit it but if you had a rod belt you know you could hold it but this boat being low gunnels down here on my hands and knees, cranking them in because I want Wahoo for dinner, baby. I want Wahoo for Thanksgiving dinner. But I mean, there's no mistake, the head shakes 100% of Wahoo. He is so far back there. I mean, he dumped probably a 200 yard run and there's no telling. I mean, it could be a 20, 30 pounder, it could be a 40, 50 pounder. But we got the Pen 70 on one of the Winthrop butts, you know, a Terminator butt that goes up and down one of our 80 pound stand-up rods. And this is just straight grinding now, turning and burning, and he's pulling still. Sometimes a wahoo, you know, you get him coming, and they start skipping on the surface and coming like that, but he's got his head down still. He's not planed up, but no mistake in that strike. You don't need a big boat. I mean, we're on a 25 foot bay boat, but it's calm like this. I mean, you could be out here on an 18 footer doing this, but it's nice. It's a beautiful day here. Free front, a little front coming through right now. You can see the clouds around. You don't want to fall off the side of this boat, you know, it's, it's a flat bay, but it's a really cool boat. And this boat's going up for sale. I said for sale right now, actually. Fingers crossed he stays on there. He's probably within 100 feet, I would guess. Indicative of a while, you see that rod tip there, it's just bouncing around and that's him shaking his head, trying to throw the hook. I bet we're gotta be 70, 80 feet from the lead. Then we got a leader, you know, a little shock leader about 30 feet long. I have to leader him up here and hopefully get a gap in him. I just bumped the drag up on the preset. Cause there's already up full, but still barely gaining on him. He did that first run, I mean, he was dumping, it was screaming, quick, it was buzzing. Came off and he, either he came back or another one came back and grabbed and dumped another 150, 200 yards. He might have been back there 400 yards by the time we finally hooked him. Oh, I see him, we got color, here he comes. Nice fish, he's back there spinning. Nice water. 
Here we go, baby. This is us. This is our time to shine right now. Please stay on there, buddy. Wahoo, baby! Thanksgiving Wahoo! Got it done. Rigged that little rope last night. That's the one we want right there. Probably about a 25 to 30 pounder. Good fish. He dumped the reel. He was hooked on the outside. That's why I took a left to get in. He wasn't coming straight by now, so he's on the outside of it. That's a good one, though. We'll take him all day, baby. Whew, right in the cheek on the lure. Got him done. Made that lure last night. That's what we're after right there, baby. Wahoo. We're going back out. We're resetting the lines. Old blue and pink did it. Rigged that lure up last night. Put a little poll on Instagram. I think 96% said it would get bit. Four didn't, but the 96 were right. See if we can't catch one more. Eight o'clock in the morning. So when we do this high speed troll for Wahoo, it's called high speed for a reason. You can catch a Wahoo going 20 knots. You know, sometimes even a little bit more. And a statute mile compared to a knot, like a knot is 1.151 statute miles, I believe. So every 10 knots is about 11 and a half miles an hour. You should go by knots when you're on the water, but most boats go by miles an hour nowadays because they want to go faster. It sounds faster, you know? Usually we'll troll anywhere from 10 to 15 knots and just mix it up if you're not getting bit. If you got a hot lure, put more of those out. Bad news was I only had one of those lures, but it's out there and we're just zipping around covering ground, burning fuel. Like I said, all it takes is fuel to catch Wahoo. There's another boat coming, hopefully it doesn't run our stuff over over there. But uh, we're gonna keep looping around here and trying some new areas. We went back uh, by where we got the one, but no more bites, so see if we can't find one out here a little bit deeper. So it's 9.45. We are gonna call it a day. We'll call it a morning anyhow. And we're gonna start heading back to Bud and Mary's. We're gonna troll two more minutes into the reef, but we put in our time, we got one, I was happy. Um, James just sent me a picture. He just got one. You know, he was trolling for three hours and made it county set. So happy for them. And we got about 90 seconds left. So we'll see if we don't get another one. But if not, we're going to run back into the marina. There's some rain around. And we'll see you back in the dock. So we'll cut this fish up, clean the boat up, and probably show a little bit of tackle. I don't really talk about tackle too much. So probably talk a little bit of the tackle and the rigs in there and uh, our setups. And we'll see you back there at the dock at Bud and Mary's. So we made it back to Bud and Mary's. That means we didn't get another bite the next 90 seconds we trolled. But anyhow, just want to talk a little bit about the tackle we used. A lot of times I just go fishing and really talk about it. We had a few lures that, you know, we rigged up last night. I already had this one, and that's what the fish hit right there. That's what the Wahoo ate. And it was a beauty, you know, a little pink and blue combo there and some silver and blue underneath it. We got him right there on that. And that fish bit the 70 wide pen. We got braid on there. Winthrop Terminator butt here. It can either be straight or bent and one of our custom stands rods there. And you could either use, you know, a 50 or 80 class rod usually when you're high speed trolling. We also have the big electric. We didn't get a bite on this, and this, this setup's a little different. It's got a wire line on it, so the, instead of having braid line, it has mono wire. And that's a Winthrop T10 butt. It has 10 different positions, so you can make it straight, bent, or pick the angle. So that's super nice. We didn't get a bite on that rod today, but just want to show it to you and let you guys know what it was. And then we wanted to gaff, you know, gaff the Wahoo, and, this is our three inch stands gaff right here. Usually for fish like that, I would say a two to three inch hook is what you want. Um, if the fish was 50, 60, 70 pounds, 100 pounds plus, whether it was a Wahoo, a tuna, or swordfish, you could go to a four inch hook, but otherwise most of those fish that are 10 to 40 pounds, a two inch hook works great. Then once you start hitting, you know, 20 to 80 pound fish in there, say 20, 30, 40 on average, that three inch hook is perfect. So carbon fiber gaff here. We also got a new fiberglass gaffs out there on the website now, but. Two or a two to three inch hook kind of for your everyday fishing and then you know a four inch hook for your heavier duty stuff and we're going to spray all this up with a hose knock all the salt off of it put it away and we're going to grab the wahoo go to the cleaning table cut him up and get him uh, in the fridge or at home and do something with him for dinner mr wahoo we got one <laughs> yes we got one we got wahoo for dinner so Wahoo have very sharp teeth. They can bite you when they're alive and also when they're dead. You gotta be careful. His mouth's closed, but sometimes their mouths are open when they die. And you gotta be careful they don't ever get your foot or hand. Anyhow, beautiful meat, one of the best eating fish that we catch. And just like anything, start up by his head, work your way down there, and then all the way down. Wahoo is very good for sushi, you know, sashimi, sushi, all that stuff. And also on the grill, you can bake it, blacken it. Some people will stake it the whole fish all the way through. I don't really like doing that. Sometimes we'll do like a bone, maybe just a fillet steak we call, like where you take a chunk and you fold it over. We'll do a few like that, but I really like it in 
chunks and loins better. We'll show you the old wahoo worm in their stomach. So we kind of bled them out in the cooler there to knock some of the blood out. So that was good. I'm gonna do it like that, and then we'll get this whole big slab off here. Beautiful. This one more little cut up here by his head. Like that. And that. There's a slab of wahoo right there, guys. Absolutely beautiful. Now let's kind of show you what we're gonna do with it. We're gonna loin some of this out here, and I'll just show you. We may wind up loining all of it out, just you know, keeping it in chunks like that and cutting the meat off the skin there. We're gonna get rid of the bone there, kind of like in the belly meat. So we don't really want that. So we're just gonna cut that away. You know, keeping as much meat as possible, but trim the bone out there. And this is what I'm talking about. Now, usually I'll just cut this meat off the skin there and skin it off there, but let me show you this. So you're gonna do, make about one inch wide. You just don't wanna cut to the skin. You wanna go close to it though. You wanna go down to the skin. And then the next cut, about the same distance away in another inch, you wanna go all the way through. And this is how you do a steak like this. So you got this now and then you fold it open. It's like a butterfly steak. And that right there on the grill, that will be money. So we'll see you back at the house. I don't know if we're gonna eat it tonight because it is Thanksgiving, but if not, we'll definitely do it tomorrow night. And I gotta say a big happy birthday to Landon the cameraman by the camera. It's his birthday today, so wish him a happy birthday in the comments. And we'll see you guys back at the house. Hang on, one more thing I gotta show you. The Wahoo Worm. All Wahoos have worms in their stomachs. Now let's see if we can find it. There it is. I cut them in half, unfortunately, when I cut it down. But So all Wahoos have these worms in their stomach. It's really weird, but I cut it, unfortunately, when I split it. And there it is. So that's the Wahoo worm. We're going to do the other side, fillet it up, and uh, we'll see you back at the house. Welcome to the kitchen. We're getting ready to cook up some Wahoo. We didn't eat it the first night we caught it. We wound up going fishing again today, so back-to-back -back days. So I want to show you some of that right now, but check this out. We made it offshore. We're going to throw a little spin fisher here and a little jig. See if we can't catch some bait fish. There's some weed around here, so we don't snag the weed. But early morning here, beautiful going out. Tan man was going out at the same time, but we just beat him out. And uh, hopefully we'll catch a nice fish today. Could be a big, we want to try to catch a big live bait, you know, whether it's a bonita, a blue runner, a rainbow runner, put that out live. See if a big kingfish, a wahoo, or something like that eats it. You know, maybe a sailfish could eat it. So we're gonna see what happens. Gotta get bait first. Fine, I'm up for two on. So now the key is to get these things in. Put them out where they're nice and lively. Who put these things out so far? I did. I to put them out far to get a bite. Here we go, we got color. Ooh, perfect. That is a bait there. Yeah. There he goes. Really? He's gonna get shot. Yeah. Bring them over here. This, you know, this is on a little on a bigger side, but we'll take them because that's what we got. And if we don't use them all for bait, they can definitely be crab bait. This is a real deal bait right there. We're not playing around. Live Benita going out. Somebody said it's going to be big. A shark could eat it too. Hopefully, they don't get a shark. We got one of our 20 pound rods in here, one of our offshore spinners, paired up with a Penn 6500 Authortac. See what happens here. Let's see more crab bait. Crab bait are us. All right, the bait are out there, trolling along. Just when we're going slow with these live baits out, and with the big bonitas hoping for a big king or a or a sail, whatever, eat some meat on here. This could be good swordfish belly baits. Bonitas are thick around here, that's a good sign, a lot of bait in this area. As you can see them boiling, they're kind of jumping on top. Right down in the bite, yeah. Ooh, is... Better than some of those other ones. That point is big. He's good. We ain't got no bites on the big baits yet, but we're getting uh, plenty of swordfish belly baits and crab bait. I'm gonna show you how to catch a bonita. Got a pen spin fisher 3500 or one of our light rods, a jig right there, 
You just want to do a nice long cast out there. Let it sink down for about five, ten seconds. Just like that. And wind and jig, wind and jig. Thought I was gonna, oh, there he is. Right when I was about to give up, there he was. I was gonna say, don't give up. Bonita on. Right. There's a bonita. Fresh bait. Cast it back out there. Let it sink down for about five seconds. Just wind it and start jigging it like this. Keep jigging, give it a good lash. Make it look alive. There he is, Benita. This one's been out there for about 20 minutes, no bites. Not to say he's still not decent, you know, he still looks decent. I want to get a nice fresh one on there. Well, good thing we checked him to change him, he's dead. There's one lively bait. Yes. He's frisky. This is non-stop Bonita action. These are the same Bonitas they're talking about in Step Brothers. The tro trophy fish, the Bonita run in the South Pacific. Although we're in the North Atlantic. Now, I'm not saying a big fish you know, wouldn't eat this four pound Bonita, but put a little one pounder out there. That's money. That's the one we're swapping out. and It's probably not four pounder, close to three and a half, four pounds. I have to say, fish wouldn't eat them, they would, but just a good chance of missing them. A lot of other fish will have trouble eating unless they're really big. Well, we tried, we gave it about an hour. With big live bonitas, we even put a live runner out there, but no bites from what we wanted. So we're gonna put the high speed wahoo lures out and give that an hour and call it a day. So we're gonna get rigged back up here. And we actually did some of this yesterday. Got one in the morning, which was good. This is attempt number two right now though. This was the lucky lure yesterday. We'll see if it's the lucky lure today. We made this one the other night. We didn't pull them yesterday, but we're gonna pull them today. See what happens if we can't get a bite on it. Could be the new Lucky Lure. Oh, fish off, fish off, fish off. Slow down one more. It might be a while, he's shaking his head. He didn't really take much line, but I don't think it's a big one, but we've only been trolling three minutes. The good news is it's only electric. We don't have to hand crank it in. Sarah's eating breakfast and I'm still cleaning up the boat. Um, we forgot the gaff because the 28 Freeman is getting bottom painted and a couple of gaffs are on that boat. Yesterday we took a gaff on here that we got up the broad minded, but they were fishing today so we had to put the gaff back. So Nick's going to grab the wahoo by the tail is the plan. And Landon's going to video. <laughs> well, I wonder if it is a wahoo. Oh my God, he just came off right there. Uh, uh, we fished hours yesterday and we just had one on the first, literally, no, uh, about 15 pounds. The first two or three minutes and didn't have a gaff, we just lost him right there. Uh, of course, no more bites the next hour. I don't know if there's weed on here, just been over a little bit. We're gonna wind in and check. Those are long rods, way, way back there. Might be something small, just pulling a little bit. You didn't really pull any line. I might have a kingfish on here. It is a kingfish. Go oh, king mackerel. Look at my lure. He destroyed it. One bite. The wahoo gets away and the kingfish stays on. That's our luck. Hey, he'll be good for the smoker though. And you know what? I think we'll give him to Francisco back there at the marina and he'll be happy. Never know. Might be old wahoo. I think it's a fish. What was funny was I just put this reel in free school to make it sound like we had a fish on there. And Sarah jumped up. She didn't know which route it was. We always got to mess with each other when it gets boring and you're not getting bite. Oh, it's a long way back. There's the shotgun rod. It might not even be a fish. I think it's just seaweed. That could be our cue to go home if it's just a pile of weed. Now we're going to give it a few more minutes. And no wahoo. That's all we caught. Well, that wraps up today. We did lose a wahoo on the leader there, but that's fishing, you know, you don't get them every time. And I think we're going to go back home. We're going to give that kingfish either to Francisco or to Vic to cook up. We got some bonitas for crab bait and let's get back to cooking that wahoo from yesterday. Look how nice this look. So wahoo is known <laughs> as nice one of the best like sushi fishes out there. Yeah. And it's going to be sashimi here. It's going to make a little poke bowl too, but absolutely gorgeous. And if you ever catch a wahoo, definitely try some raw. And we're gonna cook some as well. We're gonna do some teriyaki. For the poke bowl, I'm just gonna cube them up. To make the poke bowl, you need rice. We had some leftover Chinese food the other night, and I should put a little rice vinegar in there. 
And we're gonna have that, the fish, and avocado, and what else is going on there? Is that it? Some pokey sauce right there. Check it out. All two pass there. We're down to the very end of it. Okay, we got lots more. I didn't used to eat raw fish. Partially because my dad always said it was bait and couldn't eat it, but Wahoo, I think, is the best sashimi there is. Got it nice and cold, put it in the freezer first, made it firm, cut it. It's awesome. Look at Claire's new luggage. Sarah got that for traveling with Claire. After I she missed a flight if we had that. She could have made it, but Claire loves like rolling around it. Claire just turned three the other day, so she turned three. She got a unicorn, blow up, pool toy, and uh, we got a birthday party coming up here this weekend, so hopefully we'll have a good time with that. Let's get cooking. So we got the Wahoo steaks here. We're gonna do Wahoo teriyaki in the pan. We're gonna do this. We have the poke bowl. Got some leftover Thanksgiving sides, but we're gonna do some couscous. Let me get some water going and we get cooking here. So it's rice, okay, avocado, Wahoo, a little bit of lime I squeezed on it. And now we're gonna put the poke sauce, two pots. Two pots. Two pats. Not too much, because it's like a lot. And a little bit of this. Now you can take it out. And some black sesame seeds. I thought we were gonna grill the wahoo. So we left the skin on it, we did the butterfly steaks. But we're doing the pan, doing teriyaki. It's been raining all day. We don't want to get rained on before we eat dinner. I think I'm still gonna do it with the skin on it though. Just to show you guys. Just some teriyaki, a little bit of pineapple juice, and obviously this will be a little sweet, but it'll be delicious, no doubt. So we're using up the last little bit of that one. And this one, we don't want it too, too hot. And then we're gonna put the water right in there. We're not gonna put any seasoning on just because the teriyaki is plenty enough of a base to cook with, so. We're gonna put that in there as soon as this gets hot. And we'll put the wahoo in there. And you don't want to overcook wahoo and dry it out. So, you know, some people eat it completely raw, but not like it medium amount of times I grill it, you know, or cook it in the pan. So, the teriyaki wahoo coming up in about two minutes. Claire is a sushi eating baby, three year old. Yeah, Ready, Claire? Ah. Uh, yeah. I have seen her devour plenty of fish before. No. More. Not. You want more? Claire. Claire eats so much sushi. This is sashimi, technically. Ah. More? Uh -huh. Say, ah. No, no, no. You want any sauce? No, 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 no. You want more? Claire loves Wahoo, the baby of bruise. You guys have to try Wahoo if you ever get one. baby? I'm all bigger. You're all bigger? Yeah, you're free now. You want more? She's a sushi baby. She's a sushi baby. So, here we go. Our Wahoo steak right here, split in the middle. And, you know, ideally we were gonna grill with it, but we were gonna put it right here. And put it in the pan here. And we're just gonna cook it like on medium heat because we don't want it to be too hot and burn because all the sugar there in the teriyaki. So we're gonna keep it on medium heat. Do that, let it cook about a minute each side, maybe 90 seconds, then flip it over and it'll be done within about three to four minutes at most. Claire. We're just gonna kind of smother it in there with the sauce on top, and this will be super sweet. And you can see it already flaking apart there, and super delicate. So this will be very, very good. This is when a baster comes into handy. We're gonna put it like this and just kind of baste it around there, up on top there. Well, I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. I know this video is out a couple weeks after, but hope you all had a good one with the family and friends, and or whoever else, even by yourself. They just enjoyed the day. Why are you eating limes? You like the right taste? So I flipped it over one more time just to make sure it's all cooked evenly. We're gonna pull it off right now. And you know, we want it to be medium. I'm not going for a complete rare, but definitely don't want it well done. So I'm gonna grab a plate here and get it off there. Let it cool off there. We're gonna put it with some couscous and we'll be in good shape. Teriyaki Wahoo. I think we burned 28 gallons or so to catch them. Like we said, if you're gonna high speed troll, it just takes fuel to catch them. And Got to cover a lot of ground. and The Bahamas, you know, that's where you can catch big numbers of them, but here we catch one or two, we're happy. You go to the Bahamas, I mean, on a good day, you catch eight or 10, even more sometimes. And once in a while that happens here too, but not quite as many here as there are in the Bahamas and other places, but couscous right there. Teriyaki Wahoo right there. Just trying to go try it out and see how it turned out. Down we go. Now I plan on grilling this fish, but did it in the pan. It's kind of rain out there and starts to know let's do teriyaki. 
teriyaki on teriyaki on anything is really good, but on fish especially, it's good. I honestly could have even cooked it a little bit less. Super white, you know, Wahoo is super white when you cook it. It's medium, you know, maybe even medium well there. I could have cooked it even 30 seconds less, but the kids will eat it this way, Sadie especially. She's a little more picky than Claire. Nice change of pace. I don't remember the last time I had Wahoo. And it's just the teriyaki's, you know, sweet and sugary on it. And you really can't go wrong with that on anything. So whether it's steak, fish, chicken, pork, I love teriyaki. Definitely try it out. We're gonna try out Sarah's Poke Bowl. Then we're gonna wrap this video up. Sarah's got the Poke Bowl and her Wahoo, that steak there was a little bit thicker than this one. That is like what I was really going for. That one's like medium, perfect, kind of translucent in the center. The mine is still good, but it's just, I just could have cooked it a tad less. There's a movie called Lord of the Rings and there's a, there's a shot in one of the movies where Gollum is with Sam and Gollum catches a fish and Sam cooks the fish and Gollum starts freaking out and says, you ruins it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel about cooked Wahoo. It's bad. You ruins it. Ruins you are it. So and the two bats does have a little bit of kick to it. More like an aftertaste, but avocado, Wahoo, sushi, some black pepper. I'd eat it as an appetizer. I'd rather eat it cooked from a whole meal though. But I'm not like everybody. Some people are different. So how about the cooked stuff? Like teriyaki? So good? Mm -hmm. That one's better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't like, when Wahoo gets cooked, it's just different. She says we ruins it. It could be anything if it's cooked, any type of white fish. He's gonna take my piece now. And that's what I really wanted. <laughs> this piece was maybe, you know, a, this piece was a little bit thicker than my piece. And mine's still good, but that would have been even better there just cause it's a little more on the rarer side, so. And before we sign up for this video, our Shallow Sport X3 is for sale. We'll put an email contact below if you guys are interested, but it's a 2022, right? Mm -hmm. 2022 25X3 and had a lot of good times in that boat, so it'll be for sale. And I want to appreciate you guys watching this video. And if you made it this far in the video, we'd really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button. Over 70% of you that watch the videos are not subscribed, so please hit that subscribe button. We'd love it and help the channel out. And uh, that's going to wrap this video up. So if you want any merch, head to the website stansfishing.com. And hopefully we'll see you down here one day at Bud and Mary's in Amarada. Buy a gaff and don't forget to take it on the boat. Yes, we forgot our gaff as you saw today. And we lost that Wahoo there. We may or may not got him with the gaff because he shook off right behind the boat. But that happens, you lose some fish. So we'll see you all next time.